Hello and thank you for joining us today on CN Live. My name is Coleon Noir and I'm a gun addict. Some people would call me an homosexual, but nonetheless, we're not going to get into particularities. Um, <laughs> the Conservative Political Action Committee Conference is coming up this week, and the NRA's Wayne LaPierre will be one of the speakers. Check it out. We elected a fascist. A white supremacist. This was a white lash. Already, the forces that conspired to keep Donald Trump out of the White House are coming together to sabotage his administration. I'm not nasty, like the combo of Trump and Pence. The rioters at UC Berkeley used violence to force the cancellation of a speech. I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. Now I want you to thank no. President Agent Orange for perpetuating all of the evil. Donald Trump will need every ounce of energy we can muster. And he has no more powerful ally than the NRA. NRA TV will take you live to CPAC Thursday and Friday. Stinchfield and Cam and company will bring you all the big moments live. Now our first guest, We'll also be live at CPAC. It's our good friend, Antonio Okafor. What's going on? Hey, good to see you. Good to see you too. So <laughs> what will you be doing at CPAC this year? What, what do you got going on? Yeah, so I'm going to be, you know, repping the NRA. I'm going to be at, uh, on Friday, I'll be speaking on a panel. Okay. Um, it's called uh, Armed and Fabulous, and really? the new normal. And sounds, it's gonna sounds be with Armed and Fabulous sounds so familiar. Oh, uh, yeah. man, I don't think so. Any, think does that have any, have any ties to, to the show or any other product? I don't know. Maybe I'm uh, I don't know. I don't, right. I don't think so. It's original concept. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. No, no, go ahead. So, so, so what are you guys going to be discussing on this panel? Yeah, so it's, uh, we're going to have Kimberly Corbin and we're going to have Katie Pavlich. She'll be moderating. Um, basically, we're going to talk about the new, uh, the new wave of, of gun rights, and that's with women. And you know, 23% of women um, or gun owners are now women, mm -hmm. and it's increasing every year. I um, mean, here in Texas, black women are the most, um, you know, increasing gun owners. So it's very pertinent to the future of the movement, and it's a great discussion to have um, here after Donald Trump's win and mm -hmm. at CPAC. So I'm, I'm glad to be a part of it. What do you think is the biggest driver for the, 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 the prominence of women, rise to prominence, so to speak, in terms of being... Um, this kind of wave of women coming into the gun community and, and really kind of taking up on their Second Amendment rights. What, what, what do you think is the biggest driver of that? Yeah, well, you know what? I think, and a lot of feminists are going to be upset that I say this, but I think it's the wave of women who are more independent, who are able mm -hmm. to, you know, they're going into the workforce more and they're, you know, most of the time they're single for a lot longer than they were before. And so in the end, it comes down to self-defense and making sure that they have that right to personal protection. And I hear stories all the time of women who um, utilize that right and were actually prote protected themselves because of it. So I think more women are waking up to the fact that it's about female empowerment mm -hmm. and um, part of the conversation should be about guns and utilizing that gun right. So now you, you, you being an independent woman yourself, uh, and you in your conversations with other women who kind of take on the same mindset but don't necessarily care too much for the gun issue what is what from your experience what what has been their kind of reservation like you know that when it comes to the anti-gunners they love to stand up and tout and scream about how you know we're all for women's rights um uh, self-reliance so to speak um but yet when it comes to firearms there's a there's an inherent disregard or almost just a hatred for the idea of firearm ownership or even a mocking of women owning firearms um, from the other side. And so when you talk to people like that, what is usually the reasoning or rationale behind that? I think it comes down to what we see as modern feminism, which is really a, left, a radical leftist agenda. Mm -hmm. And qualifier being, qualifier being modern feminism. Yes, gotcha. modern feminism, right. exactly. And that the fact that, you know, I taught feminism for two years. Uh, people don't know that. and. Mm -hmm. Feminism, for what people think of it today, is like not what feminism really is. And really it's about quickly, what are the differences? Oh, sorry. Really quickly, what are the differences? Just the differences just kind of are minor, minor breakdown. <laughs> yeah, the differences are that you know it's about 
being able to empower yourself regardless of what the ideology is. And gotcha. I think that when more women are, are keen to hearing more about that instead of thinking about Second Amendment rights as something that's against them, it's really for them. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay. So now, are there any particular speakers that you're looking forward to hearing from at CPAC? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I definitely want to hear from Donald Trump. I'm glad that they added him um, to CPAC. I was there last year, my first time, and unfortunately, he wasn't able to attend. Uh -huh. And so it would be great to finally hear him speak, um, you know, around 10 o'clock that day. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really glad to hear him and, and definitely other people in the movement who are young and they're rising and, and talk about the movement on college campuses because that's something that a lot of people are talking about these days, free speech on college campuses. Gotcha. Or does that even really exist anymore? <laughs> yeah, if we have it. That's, well, I mean, that's... <laughs> I'm trying to think about, like, so I've went to a couple colleges just as a result of the way my, my collegiate career went. Um, I, did, I never really knew it to be very anti First Amendment until recently. Um, and I, I always knew it was kind of brewing, you know, things were kind of everything was like funneling off into the left. Um, I was taking certain courses and um, you have professors who were very adamant about being extremely like basically just shoving it down your throat, their um, their ideology in terms of being a, a far leftist, so to speak. Um, what are in your in your experience? What, what's the condition on campus now with respect to not only uh, the First Amendment, but the second? Yeah, well, you know, I think the nature is that the First and the Second Amendment are very closely tied together. Mm -hmm. And we especially see that on college campuses. You know, I saw that especially as a, a college student, is that I wasn't able to talk about campus carry because it was dangerous, right? And, yeah. you know, it was basically they were restricting my First Amendment, my First Amendment right to talk about the Second Amendment. And I think a lot of people are talking about that because, for one, campus carry has become a national issue and something that people want to talk about. And so um, the more that happens, the more professors who are very anti-campus carry are going to utilize the First Amendment to to their liking and say that it restricts their speech when really they're restricting ours. Now, I'm going to play devil's advocate just a little bit, right? Okay. Um, and, and this is some of the buffoonery that I've heard from some professors, you know. Um, the, the, the notion that they don't want kids to conceal carry because when they're having a heated discussion in class, um, somebody might get mad and decide to shoot the person that they're disagreeing with or shoot the professor for a bad grade or something of that nature. Um, how plausible do you think that concern is? Is that, do you think that's an ad, like a legit concern is, is ridiculous as it sounds? And I know I'm double talking, um, <laughs> but do you think that's a legitimate concern or, or do you think it's something that we shouldn't even entertain? No, I mean, because the thing is, campus carry isn't a new thing. We've had that, mm -hmm. have had campus carry for a few years now across the, uh, in different states. Yeah. And there have no, there have not been any instances of someone shooting a professor because of something they said. <laughs> the thing is, they're going to do it regardless. If they were going to do it, they would do it illegally and bring it to, to campus if they're going to do it. But the thing is, it doesn't happen regardless if it's concealed carry and it's a, a permitted or not. Ironically, there, were, there was one case. Um, it wasn't because he, I think it was more so he got a, a guy got a bad grade. It was like an Appalachian law school or something like that, where the guy brought the gun to class. He brought the gun to the he brought the gun into the school because he wanted to shoot the professor. Ironically enough, there were two two students in the class who weren't allowed to bring their guns and had to run to their car, come back with their grab their guns, come back and were able to hold them at gunpoint uh, until the cops arrived and prevented him from basically harming or killing anyone. Um, yet. That's, that, that campus was a, 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 a gun-free zone. They weren't allowed to carry guns on that campus, but yet, for some reason, this guy, this, he just did it anyway. You know, I'm, 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 I'm so confused. <laughs> um, but, what a fun day, yeah. <laughs> so, where, so where's, um, we've got about two minutes. So where, where's the future for, for, where do you see the future going for campus carry, especially, especially under this administration? Yeah, well, I definitely see the future as, you know, woman, you know, woman focus. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of college women are starting to, you know, with sexual assault and, and having those type of issues come up to the forefront. Um, I think it gives people, regardless of what ideology background or you come from, um, a pause to really realize that, you know, I do want that right. If something may happen on me, happens to me on college campus, yeah. I want that right to self-defense. And uh, no, I don't have to agree with you know, the, the current president to know that when it comes to my, you know, self-defense, it's going to be important for me to be able to 
to choose if I'm going to have firearm or not. And I think it comes down to choice. And that's that's the future, particularly for our, for our student generation. Absolutely. Now, um, I recently saw a video of you where you were doing some training. Um, now, is that is that something that you, you, you plan on continuing going forward? Is that that you really want to kind of get into that side of things? Because it, it could be a little addicting. Yeah. You know, I, I keep looking at your videos and, you know, one day I'm like, let me be the female version of that. So. <laughs> trust me, you don't <laughs> want to be any time. you don't want to be any version of me. Trust me. It's not fun. <laughs> no, no. But well, no, but it, I'll try. I'll try. But yeah, I think it's important that if I'm going to advocate for the Second Amendment, I'm going to advocate yeah. For students, particularly to have um, guns on campus, that they be trained and uh, and I'd be the example for that. So yeah, um, yeah, that's my journey right now is is to get improve in that in that arena. I say it all the time. I'm not a I'm not an advocate for mandated training. However, I think every single person who owns a gun, even if you don't own a gun, should get training. Now, then again, I will say this: I if they were going to subsidize the training, um, make it free for everyone as a possible requirement, I may consider it. But nonetheless, I still think everybody should go out and get training if you have a gun or you don't own a gun because you live in a country full of guns. But that being said, um, thank you very much, Antonio, for joining us. And I hope you have a blast at CPAC. And um, we look forward to hearing what you uh, came across with. Thank you. I right. appreciate it. I'll Absol see you later. Absolutely. Take care. So coming up next, we'll talk about some other can't miss events with NRA TV country star Morgan Mills.